Hi, my name is Jeff Bertoft. You may know me from such internet shorts as Developer's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, um. Or Napoleon Dynamite makes web apps. Jeff is here from Texas. Yeah. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. What are we talking about? Do I wear this? Yes. What are we talking about? Is this supposed to play? What are we talking about? The web. You do have to cut out anything that would get me fired, though, right? What are some of the most memorable events in web history in the past, was it 15, 20 years that you've been in? The well, industry? that's a good question. I remember the first time I used JavaScript. Mm -hmm. It was to make drop down menus on a website. And, like, you know, when you hovered over it, so the menu would drop down. Mm -hmm. It was, um, you know, amazing and awesome, and it made the, sl the page like super duper slow. Did you use any JavaScript library? Like the millions <laughs> it of was no right library now. back then. <laughs> <laughs> JavaScript was the library. I think one of the big ones that I remember was when Apple released Safari. Because it was like an H, it was the first HTML5 browser. And so it was like, you know, I don't know, I just remember if like something was changing mm -hmm. then, you know, because they supported all this HTML5 technology. And what what uh, made you actually go in, into taking a website and putting it into the store? What was the benefit of the developers <coughs> that they see at the time? So you know, we're, you're out there and you're talking to developers, and we're like, hey, you know, you should really have a Windows app. And you know, at the time, we were just kind of kicking off the the Windows App Store, and um, so we were able to tell that, hey, well, there's all these people out there looking for your brand, and they're not finding it. You know, they're finding your competition instead. And so we really want to make sure that like it was easy for those companies to to be represented. And so um, we would look around and like I remember like Home Depot was one of the ones that that we worked with. And it's like they've got like a great application that had all of the search and everything, but people were looking for it in the store and they weren't finding it. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, well let's just use this, and your web app can then be in the store. It, it actually worked out really well. In fact, I remember like Home Depot actually put. They used it to do even in-store displays where they would have like like little tablet type devices around the store that were running Windows and you could like go to it and search for things. And it was just all their web app, but it was just the full screen app that was in the Windows store. But at any rate, it was kind of like inspirational for us too mm -hmm. inside of Microsoft because we're like, hey, this actually really works. Like we had web apps already on Windows. You could write a packaged web app mm -hmm. for starting with Windows 8. And so it was like writing a native app with web, but you couldn't you couldn't host it on your server. Yeah. You know, All the source is. had to be packaged with the app and shipped right. to the store. Yeah, exactly. So this was kind of like a shift. We're seeing, well, you know what? Like Developers really seem to like to keep stuff on the server. You know, A lot of it had to do with the fact that if you're writing with a back-end framework, if you're on top of Node or your um, PHP or whatever your back-end is, you, know, you can't, couldn't package that in the app. So whatever, for whatever reason, they like to stay on the server. And it made sense. That's how the web works, right? You, can, you want to update a file. You don't, a web developer doesn't necessarily want to go to the store and create a new package mm -hmm. and then submit it to the store and then wait for that to be distributed. One of the brilliant things about the web is that you just upload your new file to the web server and it's just updated for everybody. So we wanted to maintain that. And so internally, we're watching what like people are doing, developers are doing. And so then we created the host of web apps in that was part of the platform. So then the team inside of um, Windows, they just basically built it into Windows itself. So Windows 10 released with hosted web apps where you didn't need a web app template. You just, you know, created a project in Visual Studio and made the point it to your website. Yeah, point it to your website, and you know that was it. But you do but now magic. It works. It was magic, and it was just native. And you know, it with the web app template, there was a, there was an overhead that we had to do to get it all to work. Yeah. 
but having it all part of the platform and being native, it was just super fast and it was super lightweight. So now these hosted web apps, they ran on Windows 10, they ran well on the phones, they ran well on the Xbox. So a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of Xbox apps that mm -hmm. are, are hosted web apps today because like without needing to use memory for things like an address bar and um, you know favorites and, and sharing stuff like that that you have for a, a browser, it's just a simple lightweight web app that runs on the Xbox. So now we have like these web apps that um, not only across platform, but they're across all of these Windows devices as well. And <clears throat> we've seen developers use them to target the Xbox. We've seen developers use them to target phones specifically. Tablets even like Surface Hub, you know, some of the Surface Hub apps, like we talked about SAP last year at Build because their digital boardroom app is, it's a progressive web app mm -hmm. and it's geared towards those big screen Surface Hubs, but why not use web? You know, that was what they, they wanted to write it with. That's what their developers knew. So they built it as a web app. Our transition to Microsoft was, you know, um, we're doing hosted web apps and like Google was doing a very similar thing in progressive web apps. And so kind of uh, we sat down and decided, you know, these are really the same thing. You know, we don't want developers to have to do it more than one way. Mm -hmm. You know, they should be able to write one thing that, that works, um, you know, both places and everywhere. And so we decided, okay, well, we're going to adopt service workers. We're going to um, then basically completely support the progressive web app stack. Um, so when we moved from saying, hey, we're not just doing hosted web apps, we're now doing um, progressive web apps across the board. Because remember, back then, it was Chrome, uh, Chrome OS apps, like mm -hmm. Chrome apps. There was a Firefox OS, and there was a Firefox OS apps. And then we had our hosted web apps, and then we started supporting like PWAs for Chrome itself. So everyone had their own like app platform. And so Manifold.js built all of those. Um, as the standardization of PWAs came, we changed the name to PWA Builder. But at any rate, it's a tool that um, we sponsor. We work with a lot of people in the community. There's a lot of developers that um, should get a lot of credit for uh, the work that goes on there. But that basically helps uh, the developer community get off the ground with progressive web apps. Um, you, to, to be a progressive web app, you need to have an HTTPS site. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to, or you know, HTTP2, an insecure site, I should say. You have to have a service worker, and you have to have a web manifest. So um, we built a tool that kind of helps you solve what we can. We kind of decided we're not going to try to solve the HTTPS aspect of things. It's super important, but it's also kind of like not something that we want to be in the middle of. Mm -hmm. Like we thought about like you know looking at like shared certificates and stuff like that, but when we looked at like the security of things. We're like, yeah, that's that's just not something that help us. I think that it's much better for like our friends in Azure and AWS and those hosting places to handle the job of HTTPS. So you have to start with the HTTPS site, but then we'll build us, we'll build a manifest for you. Uh, we help you do the hard things like create all the different image sizes with, that's one of the things every platform has its own image sizes. Um, it's something that hasn't been standardized yet. Well, I don't think it ever will because like our tile sizes are going to be different mm -hmm. than Android's um, icons. And so I think that that's, okay. you know, I don't know that, that necessarily will be something that's standardized, uh, which is okay because I used to think, well, it would, it's, it would be better if we just everybody used the same image. But um, developers have told me over and over again they use different, slightly different images for iOS than they do for Android, and slightly mm -hmm. different images they for Windows and they do for. So um, it's kind of working out the way it is now. So we help you do that, and then we um, give you a service worker to add to your website to add some to kind of get you started with that with some different choices and functionality. And then the last thing we do is we help you um, get it. First of all, to on the web to download the files and add them to your website, or into the stores. So you can create a package that goes into the Windows Store, um, and for like the iOS and Android Store, we have polyfills um, to help you take your PWA into those stores as well. And you just submit to get a package and submit it to the yep. store. Yeah. And we have things like Service Worker now that's become standardized, and we have uh, many different browser vendors are creating Service Workers into their browsers right mm -hmm. now. How's that going to help? Progressive web apps or just web? Service workers are going to allow us as developers to um, offload tasks into the background. You might even call them background tasks. Having the ability to, to, to do background tasks. Now, um, like the service workers give you a proxy to run your web page through. So now you can um, handle things independently. Now, like that's going to, like, if you think about what. Twitter does, Twitter can go get your tweets even when your web page isn't open, right? Even when your progressive web app isn't open. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we could do that with hosted web apps. Um, you could write a background task, but 
um, the kind of the tough thing was is that you you'd write an, a JavaScript file that was like independent of your page, and then um, when it, it could then launch a page and, and pass things down. But it was it was proprietary. It was something that yeah. like only worked inside of hosted web apps. Um, so the great thing that we have now is we have that concept, but it, it runs everywhere. So the the having progressive web apps um, in Edge and running on Windows and in Safari at some point in the future, um, we already have it in, in in Chrome and Firefox. Now it now it really becomes an offering that developers can get a lot of value from because mm -hmm. um, they can go and make their pages super fast by going and collecting resources ahead of time, right? Or storing resources in a cache so that they don't have to go back to the server. I mean, it's great because it's it's like you can do intentful caching. Like I'm a developer. I know my maybe my page has um, you know running jQuery on it, and I know that file of, is not going to change like until I change it, right? So that version of jQuery is going to stay the same for the next you know six months. Why is it that users have to go back to my server and download it every time that they they come to my page? Um, I'm going to store it. I'm going to use service workers to store it in the cache, and you know, giving you the opportunity as a developer to control that. So now I can say, I'm putting my JavaScript files in this cache. Don't even bother going to the server. Don't even check to see if they're updated like it does with cache. You go and pull it from here without ever making a network connection. So now it enables things like you know, websites that can start up instantly and websites that run offline, mm -hmm. uh, websites that can make background calls. So a lot of things that were kind of either uh, limited to native apps, or like in our case with hosted web apps, I mean, yeah, you could do those things with hosted web apps, but it was proprietary. It was something, it was code that developers had to write specific for our platform. Now it's something that is standardized and runs everywhere. So I think that the, uh, the value proposition for developers is, is growing, and I'm expecting service workers to um, gain popularity. How do people get started? So what do they need to do? Yeah, so the first step is whether you're just targeting the web, or your targeting platform is to make sure that your app is cross-browser compliant. You would think like at this point, though it's not something we have to talk to web developers about, but it absolutely is. You need to make sure that your app works on every platform. If you're thinking about creating an app-like experience, mm -hmm. especially if you're going into an environment where you have like store reviews and stuff like that, like um, you get in the Windows Store, yeah, you want to make sure that there's not like functionality that's broken inside of your application because you'll hear about it from, from your users. The expectation I think is higher as an app it is for a website, but it's just the first thing that you should do, no matter what. You should make sure that your app works in every modern browser. Um, the second thing to do is we will help you out. You can go to P2A Builder and get your service worker, your manifest, and images created, and that kind of stuff. Your packaging. Um, then there's really cool tools out there. Um, Google has Lighthouse, and the Edge team um, supports Sonar and uh, um, some scanners that will look at your site and tell you, uh, tell you where you need to make improvements or um, you know, what gaps you might have still for a progressive web app or even just for a really good mm -hmm. website. So I strongly suggest using those tools to help kind of perfect your site. And um, then you should submit to the Windows Store. You should put your PWA in the Windows Store. Um, any developer, we, we're working now like on working with Bing to just have these PWAs indexed into the store, but uh, you don't have to wait for that as a developer. You can join the store. In fact, um, you can reach out to me, um, and I'll make sure that you get like a free code even from the store, so that you don't have to um, pay for a store account. Can I just put your phone number on the screen so people can call you? Put my phone number on the screen. Mm -hmm. It's um, eight six seven. You can hit me up on Twitter or email me or on GitHub from the project page, whatever. Uh, but yeah, like we, you know, we'll make it really easy for you to get in there and. To the site, but it's it's a really it's actually a really easy thing to do, and it's supposed to be that way because the your time and energy should go towards your progressive web app. It shouldn't go towards packaging awesome. and stuff like that. Then um, there's there's one more thing too. When you have your progressive web apps, um, you actually get um, a special surprise on Windows. We give you all that API access too that we talked about earlier. So. Um, now you can do some other cool stuff that you couldn't do before. If you want to like integrate with my people, or you want to use like badging on the taskbar, or whatever that kind of stuff that used to like always just be reserved for desktop apps, mm -hmm. now you can make it part of your your uh, progressive web app as well. And then you know all your users will love you, and then you'll make a lot of money, and you can cut me a check for you know, five percent of your profits, and we'll all be happy. Okay. 
think we're done. So what many people don't understand is that there's like a mommy app and a daddy app and they get together and then they have a um, baby app and then that baby app it grows old it grows up and then you know it gets old it might have some baby apps of its own and um, you know then at the end it gets pulled from the app store and that's the app life cycle. Okay then. I read it in a book, I know it's true. <laughs>